Is homosexuality less healthy than sexual activity of the rest of the population? We'll take a facts-based journey and find out. Hi, this is David Schmidt with Issues and Justice. Thanks everyone for the thoughtful and lively discussion in the last video that I did about uh, adoption charities. Um, wanted to follow up on some of the questions and some of the comments and I know there are so many so I might not be able to um, get all of them in this video. In fact, I'm going to really try to keep this video focused and answer uh, one question uh, posed by Saxum. And the vid the, what, was, uh, what was posed uh, was, was the question, um, how is it, homosexuality, less healthy? And I said I'd put a video together um, talking about some of the uh, different areas uh, in which uh, homosexuality is less healthy um, and uh, the dangers involved. A lot of times those dangers are glossed over, especially when we're talking to, uh, to young people. Um, I think it oftentimes is disingenuous for us to say, oh, homosexuality is just like all other sexual behaviors. It's just two consenting adults. And a lot of times we really don't think about uh, whether we really are encouraging um, behavior um, that may be detrimental uh, to, uh, to that child. I could talk about that in a future video, but, but one little snapshot is that according to uh, GayDemographics.com in the latest 2004 um, survey, 1.16% of uh, couples living together in the United States are homosexual. If you look at the numbers um, just released recently from the San Francisco Unified School District where uh, homosexuality and all sorts of different um, um, you know, transsexuality and different things like that are very open and encouraged um, in that school district and it's, and it's almost promoted to the children if you look at some of the curriculum. And uh, their, their survey found that their students reported that 13% uh, were something other than straight. That's just a, a little indicator that says, look, at, in an environment where homosexuality is really uh, pushed if not celebrated, um, that um, it seems to be having an impact on the percent of children reporting that um, they consider themselves to be uh, homosexual or something other than straight. So, all right, so that's a little bit of a tangent in terms of why understanding this is important um, because it shapes what we tell children and what we, uh, what sort of information we share. And um, I hope that people will take the information I'm giving not necessarily as being something that is uh, anti-gay. I don't have anything um, against gay people, but what I want is people to be informed about the dangers of homosexuality and have a really honest facts-based discussion. All right, let's get started. Um, the first thing that I'm going to look at um, is going to be the suicide rate among, among homosexuals. And it's significantly higher than that of the general population. Um, and according to the archives of general psychiatry, it found that uh, homosexuals with same-sex partners were at greater risk for overall mental health problems and were 6.5 times more likely than their twins to have attempted suicide. Um, and this higher rate is not attributable to mental health or substance disorders is what the findings found. And this is from a co-twin study in adult men in the archives of general psychiatry. I put the link over, uh, over on the site. I also have some other um, um, things I'm going to be um, citing. So all the links are going to be on the side. You'll be able to find those and, and dig into those, uh, those numbers yourself and the research yourself and find out if you think that um, it's really um, something that's fact-based and, uh, and accurate. Um, in the book, Men Who Beat Men, who love them, battered gay men and domestic violence. Um, and uh, Island and Let Letlier postulated that, quote, the incidence of domestic violence among gay men is nearly double that in the heterosexual population. Um, and uh, so that, that link is over on the side. You can read about that. Um, the National Violence Against Women survey, sponsored um, by the National Institute of Justice, they found that, quote, same-sex inhabitants reported significantly more intimate partner violence than did opposite sex inhabitants. 39% of same-sex cohabitants reporting being raped, physically assaulted, and or stalked by a marital slash cohabitating partner at some time in their lifetimes, compared to 21% of opposite sex cohabitants. Among men, the comparable figure is 23% and 7.4%. Um, and that is from the Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs. Got that link over on the side as well. Um, a Bureau of Justice Statistics, which is uh, an agency at the U.S. Department of Justice, um, reported uh, and found that married women in traditional families experienced the lowest rate 
of violence compared to women in other types of relationships. And that's uh, um, from the Bureau of Justice Statistics Special Report. Um, substantially higher um, portions of uh, the homosexual um, sample um, used alcohol, marijuana, or cocaine than was the case in the general population. And I have that research there. That's what That was a research conclusion um, from, um, I believe it was the NIH, which is a government uh, agency. Um, the Federal uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, which we have been um, uh, hearing quite a bit about with the recent uh, N1H1 sw uh, swine flu. Uh, it says that homosexual men accounted for 65% of the nearly 12,000 cases of syphilis in the United States in 2007, making them the, quote, primary driver of increased um, syphilis rates overall. Um, and I have a link to the news, news story about that. Um, there is an LA Times article that uh, came out April of 2007, and it talked about how um, more gay men are using meth, um, the study found, than, than the rest of the population. Um, also, um, um, there was a, a study um, in the sexual profiles of 2,583 older homosexuals published in the Journal of Sex Research by Paul Van Die Ven. Um, and it found that, quote, the, mo uh, the modal range for number of sexual partners, partners ever of homosexuals was in 101 to 500. In addition, 10.2% to 15.7% have between 501 and 1,000 partners. A further 10.2% to 15.7% reported having more than 1,000 lifetime sexual partners. Um, and I have that link as well. And basically, why am I quoting how many partners? That, you know, and the reason why is that the more sexual partners you have, there's all sorts of increased risk of disease. There's also less stability. We generally see um, um, less, less issues in a whole variety of, of areas when people are in stable long-term relationships. It's also good for, for children as well. Um, and so that's an important factor to think about um, what sort of long-term outcomes uh, homosexuals have. Now, I think an interesting study would be to look at homosexuals who've adopted children and see if their out long-term outcomes are similar to the uh, uh, rest of the homosexual population or whether um, by, in a sense, self-selecting and being ones that plan to have, plan to adopt children, that they therefore are in more committed relationships that do last longer. I think that would be an interesting study that I haven't seen any research. If you find some, let me know. Also, uh, lesbians and gay men um, may be at increased risk of morbidity and mortality due to higher levels of cigarette and alcohol use. Um, and this is from another uh, NIH, um, NIH uh, study. So in conclusion, um, or not in conclusion, but um, a uh, major Canadian center found that the life expectancy at age 20 for gay and bisexual men um, is 8 to 20 years less than all men. Now, I've seen people that say, um, you know, oh, you know, there's numbers that's been put out in the past that say um, something like homosexual men have a life expectancy of 42 years and things like that. I don't believe those numbers. Looking into the numbers, numbers myself, um, based on AIDS, um, if we go on the assumption that 1.16% of the population is, uh, is homosexual, um, and even what I did is I boosted it up to about 1.4, 1.5, um, and you take, take basically the AIDS cases and distribute them over that population to determine what sort of impact it's going to have on life expectancy. And I found it lowered life expectancy by about 5.4 years, a significant number. Now, is that 20 or 30 years? No. But 5.4 years is a significant amount. And that's just the impact of AIDS. When you look at other, other things like the increased um, uh, uh, cigarette, alcohol use, and some other things, um, then, it, then it could increase beyond that. Um, I don't think that you're going to get to 20 or 30 years, but I certainly think that you could be you could be pushing double digits. Um, and there, there does need to be better research in this area. So I look forward to, to hearing your thoughts. Please share them with me. Uh, guys, of course, please keep the um, conversation um, civil. I know this is kind of a hot button issue and I don't want uh, you know it to turn into a fight of, of pejoratives and names being thrown around. There's many more questions from the last, last video or in response to the last video that I didn't get to. Hopefully I will be able to in a future video. Um, I, this is my first time with a, with a new HD camera I have, and so I'm really thrilled about that. So hopefully I'll be making a lot more videos, and I look forward to hearing from you.